think it's time to wander back into Tasha's Guide to Everything. Well, speaking of wandering, let's check out the Fey Wanderer, Wanderer Ranger subclass for 5e e D&D. I'm Nardarkus Ted. I'm Nardarkus Dave. Welcome to Nardarky for Nards by Nards. Now let's wander away into this video. So today we're talking about the Fey Wanderer Ranger subclass in, in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, so let's, uh, let's open that up and see what we've got. As uh, with many of these, we start right off with a uh, little sidebar, a little message from Tasha, if you would. Do you think a kilt is a vital part of the Fey Wandering aesthetic? And if not, why are you so wrong? <laughs> I find, you know, that these little bits are always, always amusing. Uh, but there's always all, also that intro paragraph. A Fey mystique surrounds you thanks to the boon of an arch fey. The shining fruit you ate from a talking tree, the magic spring you swam in, or some other auspicious event. However you acquired your fey magic, you are now a fey wanderer. A ranger who represents both the mortal and fey realms. As you wander the multiverse, your joyful laughter brightens the hearts of downtrodden, and your martial prowess strikes terror in your foes. For great is the mirth of the fey, and joyful is their fury. Da da da. It's very flavorful, very cool. Also, like if you want more information on the Feywild or the Fey Wanderer and want another take on it, you can head it over to nerdarchy.com and we have an article there. We're going to link it down in the description below. Uh, your 5e D&D &D game is but a dream with the Fey Wanderer from Dash's Cauldron and everything. Nice short title for you there. Yes, you caught me peeking at the notes. <laughs> Did not have that memorized. <laughs> And if the website isn't enough uh, support for Nerdarchy and you want to help keep us making videos like this one, why not head over to Patreon and check us out over there? As a special thank you, you'll receive 5e content for players and DMs alike. We're making feats, magic items, poisons, subclasses, races, uh, print and play magic item cards, drop in encounters, chance to game with Nerdarchy, and more. There will be a link down in the description. So, uh, so with that, we're going to jump in and let's see what the Fey Wanderer gets. The third level, we have Dreadful Strikes. You can augment your weapon strikes with mind-scarring magic drawn from the gloomy hollows of the Fey Wild. When you hit a creature with a weapon, you can deal an extra 1d4 psychic damage, which can take this extra damage only once per turn. The extra damage increases 1d6 when you reach 11th level in this class. So, you know, most of the rangers, if not all of them, basically like your special ability... Is just kind of like a way to add extra damage. And again, this is another one of those. So once around, do a little extra damage. It's going to increase. It's going to stack with your Hunter's Mark to just, you know, make you hit harder. Uh, as always, we're also going to get some Fey Wanderer magic. Well, not as always, but most of the the newer Ranger subclasses seem to add magic, more magic to your repertoire. You get more spells that you're just going to automatically know. And at third level, you're going to Charm Person. Fifth is Misty Step. Ninth is Dispel Magic. Thirteenth level is Dimension Door. And seventeenth level is Mist. I think these are all you know, very, very fun, very thematic spells. And since a lot of them are, you know, off the Ranger list, if not all of them, uh, they're all things that I think, you know, really represent the Fae and are really useful spells. So happy to see that added to a Ranger list. Yeah. So also we get one of these cool charts uh, as well. And uh, just kind of like flavor your character. It's a D6. Uh, illusionary butterflies flutter around you while you take a short or long rest. You got fresh seasonal flowers sprout from your hair each dawn. You faintly smell of cinnamon, lavender, nutmeg, or another comforting herb or spice. Your shadow dances while no one is looking directly at it. Horns or antlers sprout from your head. Your skin and hair change color to match the seasons at each drop. And like these are suggestions, so I'm sure if you came up with something similar, your DM would be more than happy to be like, you know, that's a cool idea. Why not? I, I love this. They all offer different things. And if you wind up like kind of multi-classing, like you could definitely flavor what thing you've, which, which thing you've picked or rolled off of this list with a whole nother subclass, you know, uh, can't life for the life of me, remember the name of that, that show that just released on Netflix, but like, there's a whole, whole thing about these humanoid animal hybrids on Netflix. And the one kid's got like the, the deer antlers, like you've got that option right here. Uh, you know, you could definitely have a lot of fun if you were playing like a shadow sorcerer and, oh, well your shadow dances, how fitting is that for your character? Uh, 
I think Ted's referring to Sweet Tooth, and that, it's a very good show. That that's it. You know, I just couldn't couldn't think of the name. Uh, but like, I, I see these things, and it, it it gives me ideas of like, oh, I would like that kind of idea. I think for a a ranger druid combo with the, with the deer or staghorns, I'm like, yeah, I I dig that concept. Uh, but we're not done yet, and uh, for third level, uh, we also have otherworldly glamour. Your fake qualities give you a supernatural charm. As a result, whenever you make a charisma check, you gain a bonus to the check equal to your wisdom modifier, minimum of a plus one. In addition, you gain proficiency in one of the following skills of your choice, deception, performance, or persuasion. So, I mean, Ranger is already one of the more skill-heavy classes, and definitely for the martial classes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, adding, you know, another skill as well as, you know, getting even better at charisma-based skills is kind of cool. Absolutely. Also very fitting for a fae style character. So at a seventh level, we get Guiling Twist. Magic of the Fae Wild guards your mind. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened. In addition, when you or a creature you can see within 120 feet of you succeeds a, on a saving throw against being charmed or frightened, you can use your reaction to force a different creature you can see within 120 feet of you to make a wisdom save against the, your spell save DC. If it fails, the target is charmed or frightened by you, uh, your choice. For one minute, the target can uh, can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turn, ending the effect on itself or on a successful save. I think this is fantastic. I love this is like this is like mental judo, right? Like, <laughs> and, but it doesn't even have to be against you. Like, you can use your mental judo or aikido if you prefer against anyone if if it happens in your vicinity. You know, it's like oh, you know, we. You know, whether it be like you trying to do this against an NPC or whether you're doing this against a party member who has already failed the saving throw, uh, you know, against being charmed. It's like, no, you're not going to be charmed by them. You're going to be charmed by me instead. Like, you can definitely have a lot of fun. And I see this as, you know, you said the mental judo or like, you know, uh, the mental tactical game on the, on the map. I dig it. So, hear me out. Sure. You've got charm person on your list. Mm-hmm. You try to charm somebody. They pass their saving throw. Mm -hmm. They're within 120 feet of you. You can then use that on someone else. <laughs> technically. Yes. As long as you haven't, you, you haven't used your reaction <laughs> if they pass their saving throw. So technically, like, even on your own spells, not only is it defensive, but offensively, like, if you don't, you know, if you don't succeed in using one of your charm or, or frightened abilities... That you might have on your spell list, then you get another shot at doing it again. Well, wait, he gets another shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely a lot of fun, and I, I think it's possibly a, a tactic, uh, you know, for how to how to properly you know use and play this kind of, kind of character. Uh, but we're still not through. We got two more abilities. Eleventh level, we're going to get Fey reinforcements. The royal courts of the Fey Wild have blessed you with the assistance of Fey beings. You know, summon Fey. It doesn't count against the number of ranger spells you know, and you can cast it without a material component. You can al also cast it once without a spell slot, and you regain the ability to do so when you finish a long rest. Whenever you start casting the spell, you can modify it so it doesn't require concentration. If you do so, the spell's duration becomes one minute for that cast. So there's a lot of cool things going on. One, you're getting a spell to add to your spell list. Always good when you're a caster. Mm -hmm. I love having options. Two, you can cast it for free. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Three, you can then cast it and have it not be a concentration spell. Uh, so. It shortens the duration, but let's face it, most of the stuff is getting used in combat. Not always, but a lot of times in combat. So, And that's when really concentrating on multiple things at the same time is going to matter anyway. So I feel like you know it's all win. And also, it's one of those few instances where we're seeing a concentration spell not requiring us to concentrate. So everything that they've done with this particular ability, I love. A lot of times when you have a spell that's being added throughout, you know, the, the fifth edition subclasses, a lot of times it's like, oh, you can cast this spell once. And, you know, in the earlier, you know, earlier editions, in the earlier stages of fifth edition, you would just be able to, to cast it once with this class ability and that was it. Then it become became, oh, well, you now know this spell 
and you can cast it. But if you're using this feature to cast it for free, you can do this other ability. Now, regardless of whether you're using a spell slot or using the class ability, you can still modify the spell with this extra class ability. I I love every aspect of it and it and it speaks to the nuances of how 5th edition is continually kind of creeping towards, you know, modified class abilities and spell abilities. Was that just like a really long-winded way of saying power creep? Yes. <laughs> Checking. <laughs> that checks out. Uh, it's kind of cool. I'm digging it. Uh, 15th level, we get Misty Wanderer. You can slip in and out of the Feywild to, mo to move in a blink of an eye. You can cast Misty Step without expending a spell slot. You can do so a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier, minimum of once, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. In addition, whenever you cast Misty Step, you can bring along one little creature you can see within five feet of you. The creature teleports to an unoccupied space, your choice within five feet of your destination. destination space. Uh, man, this is so cool. One bunch of uses of Misty Step. Misty Step's a great spell. Yeah. Uh, being able to cast things as a bonus action, nice. Um, but in addition to that, our Misty Step is better than everybody else's Misty Step because we can bring a friend. Yep. Fra friendship is magic. <laughs> friendship is magic. So a lot of great things in that particular subclass. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. You know, every time I, I, I read this, uh, a subclass in here, I'm like, man, do I have any games coming up? Can I play that one? Uh, and, and this one is definitely kind of a, a standout for me. Yeah, we've definitely seen uh, seen it come up in some of our, the games that I'm playing, and uh, and it, it's a, it's a fun, effective subclass. You know, they they get to do the extra damage. They have cool utility things they can do. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. I would definitely play a Fey Wanderer. But the question is, are any of you playing Fey Wanderers? What are your experiences or cool stories that you want to share down in the comments below with the Nerdarchy community? While you're down there, don't forget to do all those cool things like like, share, subscribe, even go ahead and click on that notification bell. Quick reminder, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, we drop new Nerdarchy videos, but you can't wait till then, no problem. Up here somewhere, you can click the card for five essential tier one ranger spells. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.